Egan really? asks me every day, what was your happy thought when you woke up this morning? You know what That's it adorable. was today? Since he was right down the hallway from me at the hotel where we slept? My, my first... My pizza that you left behind? No, my first good thought was, I can't wait to hear all the takes. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Pat. Hey, Bob. How are you? I'm well, and you? I'd be better if you brought Jamie his pizza, but we'll move on. <laughs> Man, no wonder he's all hornied up today. If he just had some pizza, yeah, he might be all down. right. <laughs> My God. All right. In the movie Anchorman, they had Panda Watch. Panda Watch. The mood is tense. I have been on some serious, serious reports, but nothing quite like this. And in Philly, we have James Harden Watch who is the size of a panda, so this fits. The Rockets Ooh. guard still wants out of Houston and appears like he wants to come here, but according to a recent photo of the Rocket star, that may just be to hit up all the cheesesteak spots in the city. The photo Ouch. wasn't a great look, but combine that with the nugget we got yesterday, because even though Harden wants out, it seems like the Rockets still wanted to make the relationship work, kind of like me with my sixth grade girlfriend. I, just like Houston, didn't realize it was over. He skipped voluntary <laughs> workouts last month to go hang with rapper with a rapper on his birthday, and the Rockets were cool with it. He then couldn't practice because he was seen at a strip club. Well, with just a little wrinkle in here. Meek Mill is one of those rappers. A little wrinkle in the story, Pat, you know? Let's be specific. Wow. Talk about knocking you know, off track. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, whatever in the him, segment. Him and Meek are, are close. Well, I'm just saying, maybe uh, Meek I mean, is... Recruiting? Oh, he's absolutely recruiting. Yeah. Yeah, no, he, he's trying to hit him up. But uh, they were cool with that. He then couldn't practice because he was seen at a strip club with no mask. Practice. <laughs> not a game. Not a game. Not a game. We talking about practice. And then we got the report yesterday that said the team allowed James Harden to hop on private jets, miss practice, all to head to Vegas and party. Now, on the surface, this looks bad, but that's only if you've never seen the Chris Angel show that they have at the Bellagio. <laughs> and once you've seen that, you understand it completely. But this is a sign of star treatment and an effort by the Rockets with it because he'd return with uh, he'd return from the Bunny Ranch and then he dropped 50. This seems a little egregious, but as we found out in the documentary The Last Dance, the Bulls allowed Dennis Rodman to do basically the same thing. It's also worth mentioning that Vegas had some incredible all-you-can-eat buffets, and from the looks of it, James Harden ain't saying no to that. Great yeah. story. Compelling and rich. But I ask you, gentlemen, how much of this concerns you? It's fairly concerning because I don't think it's the culture you're looking to build. When you give the guys the keys to the castle like that, they also can then hijack your franchise. I, and look, I fully expect Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid in time to do the same here. I'm not naive, but uh, it's not. Yeah, I it, like I love James Harden's game, but I like I do have hesitations about bringing him in. It's such a fine. It's such a fine line. These guys are adults. All right, obviously the money factor, whatever it is. I mean, I remember covering the Sixers when they played the Chicago Bulls in the second, in the first round that year when they the Sixers were the eighth seed, Bulls were the one, mm -hmm. and Joe Kim Noah. Like people coming up to me saying, "Yeah, you know, he was, I, I saw him in the in the you know AC uh, casino at six o'clock this morning, and they had a seven o'clock game that night." Yeah, you know, different things like that. How do you rein it in? I mean, the greatest player of all time was gambling well, in <laughs> casinos the night before Eastern Conference Finals. That was what Allegedly. I was going to see. That yeah. might be your argument, like saying if they come with Michael Jordan did it, you ain't no Michael <laughs> Jordan, exactly. dude. Exactly. There's not many Michael so, Jordans in this world. I, you know, it's hard to curtail, and and like if you were just taking Jalen Hurts. I mean, Jalen Hurts. If you were just taking <laughs> Get James, your mind out of the gutter. James Harden on his, you know, credentials, you're okay with it. Yeah. Uh, what do you What do you think the odds are? I, I have the little <laughs> conspiracy theory that Daryl Morey, Daryl Morey is uh, potentially leaking some of this out, spilling the, the beans to maybe devalue. Because, look, him and Houston's relationship is not a good one. It's quite well, bad. Well, actually. here's the thing. If Daryl Morey doesn't want James Harden, which I believe him when he says he wants to go forward with Ben so Simmons I, and so Joel Embiid, it doesn't behoove him to put it out. Because if he does, he's just devaluing him for other teams. You want other teams to play top, yeah, he's pay top he's, dollar. he's devaluing him across the board. Right. Which so, gives them maybe a shot if it falls down to a Tobias, to Tobias Harrison, Maxi some. or something. like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, 
I hear you. I I would go no on that. Okay. What are you supposed yeah. to do though when you get free Circus D solicited tickets? Like, are you just supposed to let I've those go? I always to go to that. Uh, that. Everybody does. It looks like a great time. Yeah, and you can. He be gets like, some tickets. He goes to Vegas. He what, enjoys himself. Which which movie is it where they do mushrooms and? Oh, go? it's not uh, the other guys. Yeah. Or, no, no, no. no, no that knocked up. Paul knocked Rod, up. Yeah. Knocked up. Everybody, I think, has wanted to do that ever since that movie came out. Look, I, did you I see went. Knocked up? I went to Vegas. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, I went to Vegas on my honeymoon, and I performed better after seeing Siegfried and Roy. No question about it. Now, was this before they got eaten by tigers or, or after? Well, one of them just died, so we really probably and we, shouldn't and, talk and about absolutely, that. And we, you know what? And we can pour one out on this show for them. <laughs> uh, we will move on, though. <laughs> Guys, let me take you back to the year 2000. Y2K is all the rage. Papa Roach, we're talking about last resorts. Bob Cooney still had hair. It was a simpler time for sure. I was graduating sure. high school. Wow. This isn't about you. This is about something yeah. else, Jamie. That year, there was a movie that has stuck with society like few movies have. No, I'm not talking about Big Mama's House. I'm talking about <laughs> the Helen Hunt, Kevin Spacey, Haley Joel Osment feel-good movie, Pay It Forward. And apparently in Minnesota, they just got this movie at the local Blockbuster because last Thursday at a Dairy Queen, a driver paid for the car's order behind him in a Pay It Forward act. But little did that good Samaritan know that the gesture lasted 900 more cars. Wow. It lasted more than two days until finally one guy said, sweet, a free blizzard, <laughs> thanks. And then he just took off. So uh, this is a feel-good story. 900? 900, yeah. Holy hell, that's cool. This is a feel-good story, no doubt. But it's also a story about the savages of Minnesota who, in the middle of December, are getting their ice cream fix, even though the high in this town <laughs> is 30 degrees today. So, hey, hey, have you had an Oreo blizzard? Those things are look, phenomenal. No. If this story was just about that, the fact that these people are eating ice creams in 30 degrees, that these people would have my respect on that alone. But the pay it forward move is pretty cool, too. 30 degrees at this time of year in Minnesota is like a heat wave. Yeah. I've walked the streets there when, like, looking at a, a bank clock where it said, like, minus 12. Yeah. Have and I ever, thought, what the shorts. hell am I doing Have either here? of you two been the beneficiary of a pay-it-forward act? Because I never have. No. People don't I like to pay it forward. I have not. I've done it many times. Oh, and yeah. actually, coming over into the city this week, a guy in... Oh, it was Tuesday. I was coming back for beers with Bob. A guy in front of me, two cards ahead of me, was having trouble finding money. And the guy ahead of me said, let him go. I got it. That's cool. So, yeah, I, people are really good I've with that. I've helped out, at, you know, a woman at Target was like, you know, $1.75 short and she was paying cash. And I was like, I, I got you, I got you. Do you have a limit or do you just do it? And- uh, yeah, no, there's definitely a limit. I'm what, working, what, I'm working what, on a fixed income here. What exactly, <laughs> what exactly is many times? Like you're acting like you're just, you know, driving no, across the bridge and throwing cash around. Uh, it's, I, it's happened like twice to me where I've oh. seen somebody like struggling for coins or a dollar and I'll just be like, hey, yeah, I got, no, I, I, I've I, done it. I would yeah, say I want Bob's take on that in one. this calendar year. Because I don't do, I don't use. Um, yeah, you're not yeah. the easy pass guy. I'm not like the easy psycho. pass guy, which is fine. No, it's a psycho. Move. So it's not a psycho. It is. Move. No, it no, is. All right. So am psycho. I in the minority of people that don't have easy pass? No, there's a scary number of you. Ah, uh, yeah, whatever. So uh, I would say in this calendar year, I've probably done it close to ten times. Oh, I've nice. paid a little. I've paid a toll for the person. Once a me. month. That's that's solid yeah. work. Yeah, for that's you. that's probably it. Yeah. Okay, we'll just no move question. on. No question. We'll move on. All right. Yesterday in college football, there was National Signing Day when 18-year-olds sign up to be free labor for a college and where they sign away their likeness, which, wow. mind you, includes their name. And that is an was issue. Was that a shot at the NCAA? Absolutely it was. Yeah. Uh, they sign away their name. That is an issue with the new Liberty University quarterback and the nation's new favorite player because at a small press conference, General Booty made it official and signed on to throw t- touchdowns and get some of his Wait, own last name. John David Booty's son? General Booty is actually related to former Vikings quarterback John David Booty. He is his uncle. Wow. But John David isn't the name General. (laughs) So that's the entire story. There's two people out there who, when deciding what to name their child, they decided General Booty was the right (laughs) choice because... Those parents are funny. Because Private Booty might get him made fun of a bit. (laughs) So they went with General Booty. So his his email address is probably generalbooty at gmail.com. He probably gets some looks when he's given that. Oh, out. it's like Kramer with the ass man. <laughs> yeah. How, like that kid walked into first day of kindergarten. Like, <laughs> so, it's me, General Booty. Who that's got right. Jail. Frank Sinatra or General Booty? Uh, General Booty's climbing the ladder. <laughs> he was not allowed in the coat closet for more than four, three minutes at but a time. But think about that. His resume is going to have some form of General Booty. Email some at- form. Well, it's whatever. just going to say General Booty on it multiple times. His well, middle yeah, name it. is Latza. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's uh, those parents have to be fun. Look, so if, if you're looking, if you're if you're expecting out there, just 
you know, don't pass judgment. Keep it in mind. Okay? <laughs> All right, so we got to keep an eye on Liberty College now. And by the way, it's uh, it's kind of a Christian college or university. Yes, it is. Sorry, we cannot accept you. We read your name. Yeah. All right, uh, guys. Uh, by, real, real quick, just to back to one of the old stories, Anthony uh, text in. Cirque du Soleil was one of the worst two-hour periods of my life. Oh, he's a football guy. <laughs> I mean, the whole time he's trying to equate it to uh, the athleticism and the, you know, the combine drills Can and whatnot. Can that guy be a tight end? Yeah. I beg uh, your pardon? All right, guys, this will be the only time I ask this. How did you do in your fantasy football league this year? I uh, just lost in the semifinals. I won the regular season. in another one. I finished third. Well, I did something that I do a lot. I finished dead last. Oh, <laughs> what a loser. Yeah, luckily for me, it's a keeper league, and I have the number one pick. I'm also lucky because there's no punishment. And some leagues are run by savages that force a punishment on the poor soul that drafted Carson Wentz in round two, thinking he'd be back to his 2017 Ooh. form. Not naming any names. It was me. And Second round? I wasn't, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it was a keeper league. All right, and one of those... You leagues. never saw the natural. You can't throw stuff. No, he can. Okay. Uh, I'll finish in dead last. He can throw whatever he wants. In. <laughs> and one of those leagues is the Lunch Table League in Cincinnati. With the regular season concluding, it was Adam Gardner who was in dead last, and the punishment he endured revolved around a Cincinnati staple, Skyline Chili. Have you guys ever had that? I have not. No. And when I was with Sunday Night Football, we never did a game in Cincinnati because they usually stunk. Uh, that's Cincinnati, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I never have. Well, no. Adam, I know the Kelsey brothers love it, though. Yeah, and Adam is a big fan as well, but even the biggest punishment, but there's a twist. For every Coney dog that he ate, and a Coney dog is a hot dog with mustard, chili, onions, and a ton of shredded cheese. Sounds pretty good. So for every Coney dog that he ate, he could leave an hour earlier than the 24-hour mandate. He entered the location at 10.30 a.m. He left at 8.55 at night. No need to do the math. Gardner ate 14 Coney dogs. Ooh. Yeah. So I bet you he was stretching his back. Spending, <laughs> spending 10 hours in the place and during two shift changes by the staff, adding over 4,700 calories and a $45 bill. When Gardner was asked if he felt all right, because, you know, that's a lot of food, he said, quote, I just really need to stretch my back. <laughs> Wait, that's only 4,700 calories? Yeah, I guess they're kind of small hot dogs, oh, but still 14 of them. I would have pounded, oh, they're big? pounded the over on that one. Yeah, I would have thought way I more. I bet you would have. It dep- it dep- I guess it depends on the guy, yeah. whether it's big or small. Well, calorie-wise, it's calories. I just want to guess I was talking more. about... All. Okay. All right. You were oh. talking about something else. I see yeah, what's and like, and you know, and guess what? We'll move on to birthdays, <laughs> gentlemen. Pro golfer Rocco Mediate celebrates a birthday today. You guys are golf fans. I'm not, but Mediate. Uh, and that's why I butchered the name. I yeah. saw him at the BMW Championship at Aronimink, and I and I yelled out... I thought it was. Did you yell out Baba Booey? No, no, no. I'm not <laughs> Are you that, that guy? guy? Mashed potatoes! Get in the hole! <laughs> no, I thought somebody. I, I forget who I confused him for, but I yelled the wrong name like, <laughs> Nice butt, Rocco! VJ Singh! Yeah. Way to go, Tiger! <laughs> and somebody looked at me and was like, That's Rocco Mediate. And you just yelled out somebody else. And I was like, I know. I know sports. Yeah, yeah. No. Go get $98 octopus shorts in the clubhouse. <laughs> All right, see ya. Uh, well, it's, it's his birthday today. A friend of the show, Michelle Tafoya, turns 28 today. So Aww, happy birthday, happy Michelle. birthday Michelle. Michelle. She looks 24. A former flyer player and head coach Craig Baruby celebrates a birthday today. The chief. Yeah, he had a, quite a turnaround in St. Louis, that's for sure. Yeah. He won one of those cups, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, sponsored by Stanley Steamers. Okay. Former Eagles linebacker Takeo Spikes celebrates a birthday today. How many many of you liked him? How many of you forgot he was even on the team, though? No, no. Really? I've met Takeo a bunch of times. I have an autographed book of his. He has a, he authored a book. Yeah, he he has a, he has like a, he got really into photography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a a beautiful looking book, and he signed me a, he was in the studio here with us. He He was a jacked dude. That might be the biggest neck in the the NFL. He has one of the greatest like he was talking about Dawkins and about the intensity of Dawkins and when Takeo Spice tells tells a story of like he looked at me and said I'm gonna take his soul <laughs> I get chills I'm like ready to run through a wall yeah. but and he also in that deal by the way that he came over from Buffalo I believe uh legendary Kelly Holcomb came in that deal but it's not his birthday today yeah so we will move on to former when is Eagles his birthday we'll get in, we'll get into that later okay former Eagles safety Sean Considine celebrates a birthday today oh, University yeah. of Iowa yeah, yeah, yeah. Fourth round. Good, good work by you. But the best birthday, he was number 26 in your program. Number one in your heart, Chase Utley's birthday is today. Ah, ah. the Silver Fox. Yep. Events today. In 2000, T.O. caught an NFL record 20 passes from Jeff Garcia that equated to 283 yards and a touchdown. Wow, I forgot about that. 20 passes, yeah. 20. If only we could have a guy like that in this town, Jeez. right? Jeez. What happened when he was here? Did, did they go? In 2003, the world well, lost the most clutch athlete ever, 
former Cleveland Browns quarterback Otto Graham died. Ten championships in ten years, all while rocking a unitard. The man <laughs> defined clutchness. So RIP. In 2011, the Phillies re-signed Jimmy Rollins to a three-year, $33 million deal. What a bargain that is in today's world. Yeah, right? Seriously. Jeez. It is amazing and when you be- look back on salaries. And if you remember the quote from him, I'm definitely not going to take less. Yeah. And that was like, oh, okay, that's, that's a decent Now somebody of J. Rollins' ilk for a three-year deal is getting like $120 million. Yeah, and in 2016, Donnell Pumphrey breaks the NCAA career rushing record. That kind of talent doesn't come around often. You got to draft a guy. Luckily with him and you for get the, the chance. Luckily for the Eagles and their fans, the team was able to steal him in the fourth round. Yeah, and that. What? Bye. Kelly Holcomb's birthday is July 9th, and, and you missed a pretty big one out there today, Pat. Well, do tell. There's a biop pick coming out in Hollywood that I think will have a lot of interest from people. A lot of interest from people or a lot of interest from uh, from horny dudes like you? <laughs> Look. Oh, wow, you're not, he you're is not, ornery when he doesn't get his pizza. You, you're you going to act like Pamela Anderson didn't do things for you as a youth? Uh, she was a, a, like a tad bit before my time. Not saying I didn't I didn't do the research on the on the video. Okay, but just a t- <laughs> you know what it was? It's the Hep C. It's yeah, the it, like that's a little that, off. Yeah, like those kind of just turned me off. But the actor and actress have been revealed. Uh, there's going to be a biop pic about Tommy Lee and Pamela Anderson, oh. and, I, and I would assume what led up to the tape heard around the world. I think it was a relationship that led up to the take. And then a boat. <laughs> and probably some, some, and alcohol. some alcohol and drugs. Well, I don't know you want me to keep these, going? I don't know the actor and actress, but Sebastian Stan. You don't know Sebastian Stan? He the was my... the Winter Soldier in the Marvel movies. He didn't see The Natural, Pat. I you know who he was? Him. Did you see I, Tanya? He played, yes. he played Jeff Galuli. Oh, he's, okay. He's a very yeah, good actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Very good actor. And Lily James is the actress playing Pamela Anderson. She's a Downton Abbey act- yeah, actress. Yeah, she's attractive. Ah. She is uh, I would not take, hard to look at. Take her to Cadova. That's uh-huh. nice of you. Can that she... is all it takes. Thank you. Very good.